protein. Ooh, yeah. Just had my gym session. Smash the protein shake. It's as simple as that, right? Well, not quite. There's a bit more to it, but it's easy enough. We'll run through the basics of it and I'll give you some triathlon specific tips and we'll go over whether there's anything that changes in a scenario like injury. So let's get to it. All right, so in that last video, we went through carbohydrates and talked about how they work. We did that in about five minutes, which actually I thought was pretty good, but I don't think we need that long for protein. Let's go with two minutes on the clock today and jump straight in. Protein is classically thought of as a bodybuilder type thing. So something to build and then maintain your muscles. And that is definitely true, but protein is a lot more important than that. But what actually is it? Just like with carbohydrates, there's a smaller unit of protein and these are called amino acids. In the same way as carbohydrates, those smaller units can link together to form a chain. And it's these amino acids that do that. And when they link, depending on what order they link in and what amino acids, they create a protein. There's 20 amino acids and there's different ways of classifying them. You'll hear terms such as essential, non-essential, conditionally essential. The essential part means we can't make it ourselves, so we have to get it from our diet. For the most part, this isn't something we need to worry about if we're eating a healthy, varied and balanced diet. Now, what do proteins do? Well, the link to muscle building and maintenance is clear, and it is important for us triathletes. We constantly damage our muscles during training, and the adaption process, where we actually get stronger and fitter, is afterwards while we recover, and protein is an essential part of this. But proteins are also the backbone of so many of our bodily functions. A large proportion of our hormones are proteins, our enzymes are proteins, and lots of our immune system functions due to proteins. So in order to keep healthy, as well as benefiting from training, we need protein. How'd I do for time today? Smashed it. So how much protein should we eat and when's a good time to do it? Those are some good questions. If you look up some articles, especially non-scientific or non-sport related ones, you'll find the suggested protein intake at somewhere between 0.7 grams per kilogram up to one gram per kilogram per day. Now for the general population, that's fine and that's perfectly healthy. So do we actually need more than that? The answer is that we probably do. There's still a lot of ongoing research, but it suggests that endurance athletes, which includes triathletes who are racing any distance, will benefit from a higher protein intake. We constantly stress and damage our muscle tissue and protein helps to repair this and create new, stronger muscle. Plus, we ensure we get enough protein to keep those bodily systems I mentioned firing away happily so we can keep illness at bay. The general theme of the most recent research is that endurance athletes should aim for somewhere around 1.2 to 2 grams per kilogram of protein per day. And that should be spread evenly throughout the day. It's been shown that the higher intakes of protein are safe, so there's no issue with that. More is not necessarily better when it comes to protein. The advice is to spread your protein intake evenly across the day. Roughly 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal is perfect. Here's a quick reference to how much protein is in a common serving of different foods. As you can see, there's a reasonable amount of protein in just everyday foods. And when you're combining them, it shouldn't be too difficult to get to the 25 to 30 grams per meal. Now, along with having regular protein sources throughout the day, we can time them around hard workouts for maximum benefit. The idea is that there's a one to two hour window after exercise where your muscles seem to be really receptive to protein. So ideally, we want to be having some sort of food within that time frame. And if it's an easy short session, then it's not as important. But if it's a long session, an intense one, a fasted one, or a weight training session, then it's gonna be beneficial to take advantage of this. And just like I mentioned in the last video, having a small snack or shake just after a hard workout, then followed by a regular normal meal about an hour or so afterwards is a great idea. Now I'm a big advocate of whole foods where possible, but protein shakes in the right scenario are something I see a 
big advantage to. This is because protein shakes will generally cover all of those essential amino acids I mentioned, and it'll be in an easily absorbed form, which will help get it into your system quicker. While I don't think they need to be an everyday thing for triathletes, consider a protein shake combined with maltodextrin. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go back and watch my last video. That'll explain it. Evidence shows a better uptake of protein when combined with a carbohydrate source. So mixing them is a good idea. And as I mentioned in the last video, carbs are good. If you don't have a specific protein shake or you don't want one, then just make your own. Make it with fruits, oats, and just add something like peanut butter to it. And if you don't fancy any of that, then just make sure you have a good, healthy meal after training with a good protein source. I'm planning on doing some videos in the future around vegetarian and vegan diets in general, but also around protein intake in relation to exercise. If that's something that interests you, then just let me know in the comments. For now, if you're a veggie or vegan and sometimes struggle with what to eat, I'd recommend you learn the following rhyme. A grain, a green, and a bean. If you follow that as a veggie or a vegan, then you're going to be covering off those essential amino acids that I mentioned, so you don't really need to worry. Now, I mentioned about injury as well. I'm going to do a specific video on the future on it because it covers more than just protein, but we'll go over it quickly from a protein point of view, just in case you're in that scenario or know someone who is. Protein's role in injury is complex, but the emerging consensus is to ensure a high protein intake around times of injury, and especially at the start of injury and in immobilization. So for example, if you're stuck in a cast or in bed. Now the idea is to limit muscle breakdown. So basically to try and stop the muscle from getting smaller and weaker. It looks like aiming for around 1.8 to 2.5 grams per kilogram of protein per day is showing positive impacts on reducing this muscle breakdown. So this is probably what we should be going for. And during any time of injury, it's essential to ensure that your daily calorie intake is enough to cover your daily needs plus what's called the stress percentage. When you're injured or under stress, you need more calories so that your body can heal itself and recover. This is suggested as 10 to 15%. So that's making sure to eat enough to cover your daily needs plus the 10 to 15 percent. If you're injured, make sure you aren't suddenly just under eating because you can't exercise. Some of the apps like Garmin Connect will give you a rough idea of your daily calorie needs, but otherwise you can use one of the online tools to get a ballpark figure and then add the stress percentage on. If you aren't sure what I mean by the online tools or what you're actually looking at, then just let me know in the comments and I'll talk you through it. Now, I don't necessarily advocate for counting calories, but if you're injured, it might be worth checking in at the start and then once or twice during just to make sure you're eating enough. It does seem that this is a critical time to ensure that we get enough protein and enough calories in our day to enable our body to heal itself. Hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into protein and how it fits into a triathlete's diet. If you've got a specific question, then just let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear it and I'll do my best to answer it for you. And if you found this video useful, then just give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Up next, it's fat time. Oh yeah, see you there.